Hi, everybody. Welcome to After 90. Maria Papadakis alongside Gareth Wheeler. Happy Thanksgiving weekend, everybody. We do have tons of things to be thankful for, but tonight... The result was not one of those things. Toronto FC lost 2-1 to the Vancouver Whitecaps, meaning Toronto FC is officially out of that playoff spot. But Gareth, what are your thoughts on the match tonight? Uh, you're right. No playoffs for Toronto FC this year, kind of culminating in a three-year run, which was simply magical for this club. But the way that today's match and a 2-1 loss to the Vancouver Whitecaps played out, it started so similar to so many other games on this frustrating MLS regular season. A goal conceded inside four minutes, meaning 13 goals conceded in terms of the first 50 minutes of matches for Toronto FC on the year. In so many games, it's been a mountain too high to climb. And really, their self-inflicted wounds, just a little bit careless with, your, with the ball in your own end, and then just not picking up a simple run through the 18-yard box. And all of a sudden, the ball's in the back of the net. You're down one nothing, and you're left chasing a game against a team that wants to just stick in, defend resolutely, and attack on the counter. And that's what happened again today for Toronto FC. And I don't know about you, Maria, just looking at this team, they've tried to chase down these early leads that they've gifted opponents based on self-inflicted wounds so many times this year. And they just look absolutely burnt out. It looks like they're out of fuel. And I think that's what we saw over the course of 90 minutes. Really, it'll be a frustrating ma to match to rewatch for the, for, the, for the coaching staff and the team because they simply just didn't have it on this game. And to go out this way and you know assure yourself knowing that you needed a win and just not being able to dig deep enough to find it, it really results in a frustrating night and what will be a frustrating few weeks ahead for TFC. Now, Toronto FC has spoken about their season and conceding goals have been one of their biggest problems, like you've mentioned. But looking at the season in one nutshell, what do you think is their biggest problem here? Well, it, it's conceding goals defensively. They haven't been the same team. And Drew Moore wasn't out there again tonight. Drew Moore and Chris Mavinga bring so much stability to this group. And defensively, they just couldn't bring it together. And again, keeping out the ball early. So you're playing at least on level terms or when you're ahead, it makes your life so much easier when you're the team that is the hunted like Toronto FC is. So it starts at the back. Uh, really, I don't think there's been enough cutting edge in the attack. And again, I'll get down to it. It's incredible. The, the emotional, the mental, the physical strain that's taken its toll. Remember, TFC made it all the way to the CONCACAF Champions League final, the most difficult route that they could have possibly faced. They lost players along the way. They won a Canadian championship this year alone, and that goes on the heels of back-to-back -back MLS Cup finals. I think that every player, every coach, the people that sell tickets, the people that, that promote the club, everyone just needs a vacation, and that will come three more games left in the regular season where players are playing for pride, they're playing for places in the team, and they're playing um, for their futures as well. So still much to be played for, but unfortunately playoff contention isn't one of them, and we will see a new champion in MLS come this season. Coach Greg Vanny also mentioned that Sebastian Jovinga, Victor Vasquez, and Josie Altador really rarely have been seen together on the pitch this season. So do you think that plays a really big part in the results so far? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Altador not starting this match, I think, has an influence as well. If Altador's on with Vasquez and Javinko from the get-go, it's a different type of beast for the other team to deal with. So even down to this game, number, what, 31 on the year, it, it, it played a massive role. And Altador was, was, was very appreciative of everything that Toronto's done for him in his post-game comments. And he's still under contract through 2019. But soccer's a crazy industry. Lots of different things can happen. And there will be, I don't think there'll be massive changes to the team. I think there will be some retooling. And for me, I'd want Josie Altador to be part of my future plans, but still at a very good age, very effective player. There will be teams that come calling. So we'll see what happens. But just understanding, you know, the likes of Bradley and Altador, they've been here really through this revitalization of this club. They've really been the backbone and they've committed so much. So on, on, on a night like this, the word is frustration more than anything else. Well, for more on the night, let's hear from the guys we've spent so much time this year playing from behind you know trying to trying to come back in games uh, yeah. cost a lot of energy mentally and physically so uh, you know to, to go down early early on in a big game tonight um, you know against the team that that was, was always gonna try to be be deep and close off space uh, yeah, that makes a difficult game that much more difficult. Yeah, disappointing. Um, 
not much else. Just disappointed, angry. Um, there's so many games I think you look back on, you think, make a play here, make a play there. Each guy probably has one of those, but typically when you have a bad season, you have a lot of those reflections. So, But at the same time, you know, I, I can't help but think that there's still something here. There's still something there. These things happen. I think uh, any organization that strives to, to do special things, you have seasons like this where you got to, it tests you, it tests you. And I think we were tested a lot. I think it matters how we come back next year. Now, Gareth, many of our Reds will be going on international break for Canada. St. Ricketts, Jonathan Osario, Jay Chapman, Ashton Morgan. They'll actually be playing here on October 16th versus Dominica and the rest. So what does it mean for Toronto FC getting that little bit of a break? Well, we were nervous at first what it would mean with the game coming up on the 17th in D.C. against D.C. United. But that's not going to really be much of a concern in terms of TFC and a playoff push. So their absence, along with Javinko being on international duty, he should be back for that match, playing on the 10th and the 14th with the Italian men's national team. Michael Bradley will be away with the U.S. men's national team. That'll open up the opportunity maybe for some other players to get into the team, again, fighting for spots. And now Toronto FC gets to play playoff spoiler. They're going to take on D.C. United and the Montreal Impact in their next two two games and those are the two teams that are really fighting for that sixth and final playoff spot I know that you know it's not the position they want to see themselves in but Toronto FC very much so has a role to play in the way that this MLS season has been written so although this international break wasn't coming at the best time with TFC fighting for a playoff spot now it actually comes at a pretty decent time allowing the players to maybe just get away the coaching staff take an extra couple days recoup re-energize and then get back at it with a fresh mind well, good luck to the rest of the guys going on international break and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope you enjoy your long weekend. Yeah, it's better to eat the turkey than sit next to one on a regular <laughs> basis. Uh, be safe. Enjoy, everyone. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching.